there is not enough necessary micronutrients in the soil across the world. The minimum organic content needed to call soil a soil, according to United Nations, is three percent. Not a single nation, not a single nation has three percent average organic content in their soil, not even one nation. See, uh, I don't go about talking Indian way of living. I talk about living sensibly, which is natural to us here. But today, we are trying to imitate the West in every possible way and messing ourselves up, we'll pay the price for that. When we say we pay the price, there are many things. One thing that's looming large, all these things are connected, but people think I'm doing separate things. I started with Project Green Hands, then for Rally for Rivers, then Kaveri Calling and now Safe Soil. Now, next year we're rolling out what's called as Conscious Planet. Even Safe Soil and other movements were under the umbrella of Safe Soil, right. uh, umbrella of Conscious Planet. Uh, I've been in conversation with various top scientists, uh, neuro… neuroscientists, psychiatrists and others in the world. It's not because that, you know, I have always predicted this, but now they're all confirming this. In the next fifteen to twenty-five years, one thing that will be most challenging for human beings is to be stay mentally healthy. Why this is so, there are many aspects, sociological and other aspects, but one important thing is, there is… there is not enough necessary micronutrients in the soil across the world. The minimum organic content needed to call soil a soil, according to United Nations, is three percent. Not a single nation, not a single nation has three percent average organic content in their soil, not even one nation. This is the plight of the world. Everybody is thinking ecology means, uh, you know, coal, oil, smoke in the air. See, these are problems, I'm not saying no. But if you switch off everything for three days, suddenly everything… You know, during uh, the pandemic time, people saw suddenly the air is clean, everything is nice. So I'm saying it is that simple, you can change it that quickly. Only thing is you're not switching off. We can easily do that if you could switch off for one and a half months during the pandemic. Consciously we can switch it off for one month in a year or maybe three days in a month. Something we can do and control those things. But what's happening in the soil is very different. Because there is no organic content, when I say there is no organic content, if you grow a ton of food from the soil, let's say one acre of land, what you're taking away is the organic content. One ton of organic content, you took it away. How much are you putting it back? Nothing, almost zero. So what this means is the organisms don't have anything to eat. It is shocking to see, even I've been in many agro-scientist uh, events, eighty percent of the scientists do not know that a tree or a plant cannot take nutrients from the soil without the agency of organisms. A complex marketplace they have. It is a very demanding market. Unless they provide the right things, they won't get the nutrients even if the yeah. nutrients are there in the soil. It's only through the organisms they can get it. Now, twenty-seven thousand species of organisms are disappearing every year. Every year, on an average, twenty-seven thousand species of organisms are disappearing. At this rate, in another fifteen to twenty-five years, we will be in a place where we can barely grow anything in the soil. Because the simple thing is this, if you take organic matter, add it to sand, it becomes soil. If you take a soil and take away all the organic matter, it becomes sand. Right now, desertification is the biggest problem. Yeah. UNCCD is partnered with us because we are a big force for them to make soil into an issue. In 2022, in the month of January, there was a COP26 in Glasgow. Fifteen days, all the world leaders met. The word soil was not mentioned. But today, soil has become main part of the narrative. European Union has declared that regeneration of soil is one of the important ways to mitigate climate change. This narrative changed mainly because of Safe Soil Movement. 
So this change of narrative and the way of… see, the human beings work like this. First we change the way we think, then we get a little emotional about it and cry about it a little bit, and then action comes forth slowly. But if action comes forth from all these people, wonderful, we appreciate, but it's not a solution. Solution is only when the policy happens. There are many aspects of policy, one simple thing is like this. See, if you… <laughs> maybe it's a… Mumbai is the wrong place for me to say this, but in any city, the older part of the city, if you look at it, yep. there is no concept of a window. Everybody is built wall to wall, wall to wall, homes. But in the newer part of the city, wherever you go, there are laws. If you have ten thousand square feet of land, you can't build ten thousand square feet. Maybe they'll allow you to build six or seven thousand square feet, some space for you, your neighbor, this is a law. Yeah. But if you have a hundred acres of land, either in India or any part of the world… Do what you want with it. You can turn hundred acres into a desert in the next ten years, nobody will ask you why you have done it, because there is no such law. I'm saying worldwide, because this is a global affair. You cannot conduct organic… you know, organic life only in my farm and your farm, it has to be a global process. When I say organic aspect, soil is the largest living system, not just on this planet, in the known universe. This is the largest living system. A handful of soil could have anywhere between eight to ten billion organisms, fifty to seventy-five thousand species of organisms. That's how it is. What your body is, is just a reflection of the soil. This is something most people have missed it, now it is becoming part of it. I'm sure in Mumbai everybody is talking about gut biome, <laughs> all right? In the yogic sciences, we've been talking about biome everywhere. Sixty-two percent of your body is microorganisms. Only approximately forty percent is your parental genetics. And today, the… Uh, the… Uh, the organic uh, aspects have come to a place, the top level cutting edge research is saying, I've been saying this for over twenty, twenty-five years, that there are organisms in your brain also. Everybody making fun of me, all the WhatsApp people yeah. trolling… Uh, all the WhatsApp scientists have been trolling me continuously, he doesn't know nothing, this is pseudoscience, brain has filters, brain has screens, no organism can enter. Today, scientists are clearly proving that whatever organisms you have in your stomach, their cousins are in your head and they're always talking to each other. If you do… if you put something that these guys don't like, they tell their cousins, trouble this guy <laughs> and he creates moods. Your moods, the way you're thinking, the way you feel, how comfortable or happy or unhappy you feel, all this largely determined by the chemicals that they are creating. You can override that, but they are moving you in certain directions. So this is how… this is the foundational life. When we talk about micro or, microorganisms, we are talking about the foundational life. We are just a flower in the evolutionary process, we are just in the top. Flower can dry up in no time if the roots are gone. So soil is about that.